I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Three, two, one. Ow. There's your not... professional cl clapper. I, I clap too hard. My There's, hands are you're too... You're too strong for your own good. I'm too strong for my own good. I got that um, uh, Lenny strength going. Yes. Yeah. Don't pet any rabbits. No, don't pet any don't, humans. Don't pet any humans because he breaks that humans. girl's neck. Yeah. I forgot for a second. That's what happens. Yeah. He murders that, that woman. Yeah. Spoilers for of mice and men, by he the way. He does a murder. He does do a murder. Um, oh, no. He does a manslaughter. Yeah, manslaughter, manslaughter. He also does a uh, puppy side. Um, he kills the puppy. His penis must look crazy. <laughs> That's assuming he has normal sexual urges. There's no, I mean, like, if he's, like, imagine puberty, but being Lenny strong. Yeah, but there's no guarantee that that's how that's going to work. That's There's no, True. like, correlation to the amount of hormones you have, I don't think, and, like penis no i'm saying like that grip strength he, he's that it's got to be like <laughs> like so, le like leather so lenny has does lenny have a prehensile penis is that what you're implying no i'm saying it, it's got to be either look like just a crust sausage because of his grip strength or it's got to be like elephant skin to like be able to handle the his his power his raw power he, or, but or once again once again strong you're assuming that he has regular sexual desire. For all you know, Lenny could be asexual. Does asexual mean you don't like the dick touches? Uh, it means you don't have sexual desires, I believe. Hmm. Uh, actually, mm, give me a second. Okay. I gotta look this up. <laughs> we have an, I, an, an, an important Google. Uh. Oh. Uh. Oh, the good news is my uh, my Snoop Jesus uh, shower curtain should arrive today. Oh, yeah? Yeah? Uh-huh. It's going to be very... I just got to go to Lowe's uh, after this, get myself oh. a shower curtain rod. Okay, yeah. So they he might still... Okay. That was that was a... I, I checked it. I am going to check my cis white male hetero normative values... Asexuals can masturbate and do masturbate. Yeah. So let's so that goes back to the important question. What does Lenny's penis look like? I is it really, normal? Is that an is that a, the appropriate is that the question that we want to ask? Because like I don't think that's the main like lesson of Of Mice and Men. Honestly, I don't even remember what the main lesson of Of Mice and Men was. Cause it, it kind of feels a little bit like it doesn't hold up to uh, hold up to like modern times. I think it's if your friend does a manslaughter, you shoot him in the head next to a lake. Uh, so uh, it emphasizes dreams, loneliness, companionship. He okay. I guess I guess there's that, but like it also has some kind of iffy stuff in regards to the mentally uh, ha like people who have non non normative uh mental states. So yeah. like I don't know. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna leave of mice and men alone now. The main reason I thought of it was because I've been I've been a bad person, been watching Family Guy. Too much Family Guy. Actually way too much Family Guy. <laughs> um and there's an episode in which they do like books so they did like um they did the great gatsby huckleberry finn and um of mice and men so that's why of mice and men was on my mind so did they do a raven like uh the simpsons does a raven 
I don't know if they do, but The Simpsons definitely did The Raven. Yes, I watched it in school. <laughs> yeah, that's... Best well, class that's, ever. Well, remember, that's like when... That was like the thing where, where like the fifth or sixth grade teacher was like, yes, something to reach these kids. Yes, that's true. Well, before the yes, something to reach these kids, there was literally like everyone... I don't know if you had the same class where like, everyone had to memorize a chapter of The Raven and then recite it back. Or not a chapter because it's a poem, but y you know what I mean. A section. Yeah, yeah, no, I did. I did. I actually memorized a lot more than that because I was one of those kinds of people. Yeah. Um, that's really all I have to say about that. Uh, but I do want to say one more thing about Of Mice and Men before we move on. And it's not about Lenny or George. It's about Curly. Now, I don't remember how well you remember Of Mice and Men, but there's a man named Curly. Okay, um, not from the Three Stooges. No, but he has a leather glove, and inside that leather glove is coated in... Va he has it coated in Vaseline. He has a Vaseline-filled leather glove that he wears. <laughs> yeah? Uh, that's it. I don't, like, understand it. <laughs> like... He's, he just had dry skin. Once a semi-professional boxer, something, something, something. Um, he's described by others with some irony as handy because he, he likes to keep a glove filled with Vaseline on his left hand. That's that's it. I don't know why. I don't know why Curly had his uh, uh, Vaseline glove. Here we go. Why oh, does he's keeping Curly... his hands soft for his wife. Ah. Uh, I mean... Hey, at least he's thinking of his wife. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot to say for a book written that, in that time period. Like, uh, now now I have conflicting emotions. I have conflicting emotions on this, but I don't know if these conflicting emotions are going to be in any way, shape, or form productive whatsoever for us. No. No. <laughs> Just no. No, there's a lot to unpack there, and I, I I, don't think I'm qualified for that. Weird that that's in a book uh, that sometimes middle schoolers read, though. Yeah. It's a... It's a little bit of a, of, of a bait for them, isn't it? A little bit. It is the, the problem is that I think they're, like, they're making kids read books before they're able to understand the meanings of the books not that the books well, themselves are bad but like I was like definitely read those books earlier than I could appreciate their meaning but also that's the only age at which I would read a book well the hard thing the hard thing is with stuff like that like part of the point is you're teaching the kids how to read the books how to understand deeper values and themes and in, in literature and appreciate literature uh so, like, it's kind of a, uh, it's one of those problems that it kind of, there's no easy way around it, right? It's slightly yeah. tautological in nature, where you have to have the knowledge to get the knowledge, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, but, like, I mean, I think there's probably better ways to handle it, and there's books that really should never, ever, 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 ever be read. Um, and for reference, Moby Dick is one of those books. Um, did I ever read? I don't know if I ever read a Moby Dick or if you I just probably did. Do you remember the any, knowledge? Do you know anything about whales? Do you know anything about a chapter filled with whales? No. No. Okay, you didn't read Moby Dick because okay. there's literally like three chapters on cetology. Oh, is there? Yeah, That's great. I wanted to die. Because I chose that book as my summer reading book for AP English. You done I fucked up. Yeah, I did. I really did. I hated myself. The, it was... Given the choice, the, I've only ever read fantasy novels. It's one of the worst books I've ever read in my life, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um... Now, I know some people... That might be a controversial opinion, because there's a lot... Because it's a, an American classic or whatever. But, like... I hate that book. Okay, fair. And with that, 
I think I'm going to start the episode nice. proper. Um, so this is Cryptopedia. Uh, I'm going to refuse to say the thing because that's just my bit at this point. Um, listen to the even the odd numbered episodes for that. Even number episodes, you don't get it. You get this explanation for why I'm not going to do it, even though it takes longer to say than the thing says. Like I think demonstrably, it takes longer to say this 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 whole like spiel about why I don't say it than to say than the it thing. does to say it. Yeah. 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 Fair. Yeah. Anywho, I'm John. I'm Brandon. Um, and this is Cryptopedia. We talk about monsters and such. That's too much information, Brandon. Monsters. One of my weeks. In such. Um, so, uh, this week's episode, and we're, we're going to play the guessing game again, because All it right. actually has, is relevant. All right. and I'm excited. potentially guess it. Uh, first sighting was 1970. Okay. The taxonomy is humanoid, and its region is Pennsylvania. Hit okay. me with it. Hit me with your guess. Uh, Pennsylvania. So, I, I have... A slight because he posted. Was it on Twitter or Discord? Something about you can, Discord. I, you can okay. Bigfoot. You can get partial credit on this one. So um, it's got to be a kind of Bigfoot. Okay. You posted so something there's... about invisible Bigfoot, but I don't think that's the the vein. I think that might have been a, a little bit of a red herring. But it's okay. definitely. It's definitely. I don't think Bigfoot. It's a Bigfoot that's inherently invisible. I think it's a Bigfoot that vanished in front of somebody once, and that's where part of the story is going to take place. You're um, close. So what's what's I'm I'm gonna let's see, Pennsylvania towns towns. I'm not I'm not cheating. I'm just coming up with a name for it. It's okay, going okay. to be the. Uh, the the Pittsburgh Ape Man. No, that the Scranton Ape Man. Okay, I'm glad you. So here's a funny thing. You pick the two locations that this story takes place in. Oh no, shit. Okay. So I'm gonna give you about a 75 percent for this week's episode. For okay. Your guess. So this week is Pennsylvania's White Bigfoot. Ah. Uh. So here's the story of why I chose this, and it. Basically, um, Albert Osman got me craving a little bit more Bigfoot stories um, for the podcast because it was a fun story. It was easy to write. It was enjoyable. It was wild. You know, all the great stuff. Um, so I sought out some more Bigfoot stories that I hadn't heard before for this episode. Now, I know it's not a creationist dinosaur, Jersey Devil, or the cryptid who must not be named on this podcast ever again, but... Bigfoot is fun, and it draws in the download, so deal with it. <laughs> um, so, Bigfoot is known to take on many forms in the fabric of its lore, uh, with the more peaceful giants to the Pacific Northwest and the violent skunk apes to the South. Tales from the Northeast of America, however, are fewer and far between. Do you think they're violent um, in the South because they're like getting into people's secret moonshine rigs? Like it's just angry, drunk uh, Bigfoots? That that could be a thing. I think we had a theory about that once. Um, I mean, assuming that assuming that Bigfoots are real, maybe. But also, it's hot, and like I can get I get angry when I get hot. Yeah, and so they're all like, covered in the fur, and they're covered in the fur. But like mm. the Pacific Northwest is kind of a chill place to live, anyways. And then like layer on top of it, you got all this fur, so like the cold doesn't even really bug you much. And it's kind of yeah. temperate, so like the way I see it, they've got they've got a great they got a good place going up there, so they don't really want to fuck around with things too much. Southern Bigfoot, however, gets angry, and like yeah. you're on their land. Like, let's be real. Yeah. And don't look at a southern Bigfoot crosswise; you will be murdered. Uh, imagine getting swamp ass, but with it that furry. Like that's that's well, enough that, to that, make you that angry. Ex- that explains. Um, that explains their anger. Fair. All right. We solved right? it. Because cause they just have swamp pass all the time. And it's <laughs> like, <laughs> God damn it. Nothing I do works. And that also explains the smell. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. We solved it. We solved it. Go home, folks. There's nothing else to hear here. Yeah. Um, 80, what, 88 episodes in? Done. Problem solved. We solved the Bigfoot. 
Technically, this is 87 because we did skip an episode. I don't know what you're talking about. That's true. Um, so while only speculation, I suppose it may be the result of greater population density or the effect of city centers such as New York City, Boston, and Philadelphia. Sorry, Jersey. Despite my affinity for your residents, I'm not calling out any of your city because your northern portion is basically New York City. <laughs> Got him. The best part uh, of New Jersey is New York. Kind of. A little bit. <laughs> like Northern Jersey is kind of New York. Oh yeah. Like let's be real. It's got that it got it has that weird borough thing. Or mm. like that weird like town, borough, township, city where you like drive and you go through three different things that have the same core name, but like there's a qualifier in front of it. Right? Yeah. And, like, I never understood what was going on. And, like, someone could say, oh, yeah, I'm from so-and-so place. And it's like, okay, cool. Which part? The township, the borough, the city, the town, the village. You know, it, fun. Yeah, fun fun stuff. I grew up in a hamlet. You did. Yeah. You did. I grew up in a city in a town. Is actually, it a city? I, actually, I think it's considered a city because it's is it the town. <laughs> well, King, I grew up in Kingston, so that's oh, the city of yep, Kingston. Yep, yep, city. So you admit, then, you admit it's a city now. No. You admit it's a city now. It's called a city. Because it it is. But it's not a city in the sense that it's not a, met- a metropolis. It is not a metropolis. It, it, is, it is not a metropolis. It is not. A, I will not but go so city? far as to say it. It's a city... Yes. But only in so far as that's what the name. We have food the- trucks now. It's got to be a city. That's that's not true. If anything, food trucks make you less likely because food trucks can move between towns. Yeah, but they only go to one parking lot. That's true. That's true. But it's also cheaper to own a food truck in Kingston than it is to actually own physical land now. That's, because that's why property values have gone. One of way them up. is actually a restaurant that turned into a food truck. I'm not surprised, yeah. considering considering how expensive Kingston yeah. is getting when it comes yeah. to buying new land. The uh, the so, Argentinian restu- uh, food truck used to be a restaurant, and they they live in the car dealership parking lot. And then there's a seafood one that lives in the um, the Spiegel's parking lot. Uh, w- one second, one and second. Then- but before you go on, that sounds like a risky endeavor. What, sell an Argentinian food in a, 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 a what, or just like parking lot? Seafood. A seafood food truck. Oh, yeah. It's a seafood food truck in the Spiegel's parking lot. That's questionable to me. And then do you, there's... Do you, do you not see why it's questionable, Brandon? There's a hot dog food cart near uh, the stadium. Well, that's just normal. That is kind of normal. Now that it's kind of it. that's kind of like that. That's barely a food truck at that point. That's just the thing that shows up at the stadium. That's a hot dog cart with a roof. Yeah, it, it's a hot dog vendor. That that's mm. that's normal. That that one that one doesn't shock me at all. Okay. The seafood one is weirding me out a little bit, though. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Why? Kingston is not exactly a coastal city. No. It's not known for its seafood, Brandon. We have a lot of seafood like theme only restaurants. We do, but I don't understand why, considering the fact that, like, yeah. considering the fact that, like, no one fishes in the Hudson anymore. No, and if you do catch a fish from the Hudson, don't eat, don't, don't, don't eat. Don't, don't do that. Don't. You can, got, I think you can eat one a It's year. got those really good circuit board chemicals in it. I think you can eat literally one a year, and then, like, it's like, if you eat another, you are physically harming yourself at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like this you are committing an act of self harm in eating another fish from this river. You're it is not good yourself. for you. Don't do it. Yeah. Um because I think I think people eat Hudson Val Hudson River sturgeon. So like Ugh. Don't Yeah. Bottom feeders, basically. Yeah. Don't no. then they tried to clean the river. Here's the problem with cleaning the river. Is that we had all those really good circuit board chemicals get dumped into it and it make the good poison. And then it gets covered with a nice layer of sediment that keeps all the poison at the bottom. But then yep. when you clean the river, what you do is you bring all that poison back instead of just letting it letting it hide underneath like a cancer. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, yeah, no, no. The correct answer for dealing with uh, the sins of our past is to just ignore them and hope they go away. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. And like, I think like two years ago, like someone tried to clean it and everyone was like, what are you doing? And then we had to stop drinking the water. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yep. Also, don't drink the water in the winter. Because of the road salt. Like, there, 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 there's a whole thing where, like, there's different cities are pushing for them to replace the wood salt with um, sawdust because it makes the water go not good. Yeah, no, I kind of I kind of uh, side with that a lot, actually. Yep, yep. Uh, anywho, so back to this week's <laughs> oh, yeah, episode. Bigfoot, not circuit board poison fish. Yeah, yeah, uh, maybe. Um, so regardless, I was surprised to find that Pennsylvania has the... Th- third most sightings of bigfoot in the united states not surprising so so sylvania is like dutch or something for oh yeah the woods yeah it's it's like pens Pens woods yeah yeah well because there's the apocryphal story of like he talked to a native american tribe and um supposedly he's they they like he was like can i get land and they're like yeah as far as you can move in a day right um and what he did was cleared a, a a path through Pennsylvania, like a like a, a highway, and walked that effectively, like rode a horse down it. Yeah, which is, that which did is not such happen. a <laughs> it's apocryphal as fuck, but it's also like the whitest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Oh, there, I'm sure he set, told people that. I'm sure oh, that yeah, didn't no. happen. There, there's a lot of things that like that is that there, is that has all that the we think happened because the guy said that it happened. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a white thing. Yeah. It's a super white thing. Like, everyone does it, but white people are, like, experts at it for some reason. We're so good at it. We're so good at, like, sucking our own dicks. We go, this is mine now, and then it just happens. Mm-hmm. We still do it. I mean, we own the moon. We own the... Do we own the moon? I, I don't... I mean, we put our flag on it. Yeah. That was white people right there. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 just another extension of American imperialism, but that's not what this podcast is about. No, you know the moon is f- there's bags of shit on the moon. I'm not surprised. Like human, because like that to get back, that's extra weight, which uses fuel. So they took all of their like excrement bags and left them on the moon. So if you go to the moon, you could find like human shit. Nice. Let me get some of that Neil Armstrong. Poop. Yeah. And there's also, like, a, a golf ball and, like, a baseball bat and sports stuff. Yeah, a bunch of stupid stuff and, like, a, a rover, you know, all, yeah. all that fun stuff. Um, so, anywho, in my hunt in the state, I found something unexpected. A Bigfoot that, much like the install base of Farmers Only, was white. <laughs> I like that zing. And much of, let's be real, much of Pennsylvania, too. Like, the the forested areas the places where the bigfoot would show up that's pretty white yeah like pretty white <laughs> it's kind that's, of upsetting that's, that's where the whites feel most comfortable in the woods <laughs> kind of kind of is isolated from all all forms of diversity and like yeah. other opinions and stuff like that you know normal stuff yeah um So, it should be noted, this is a distinct creature from the Yeti, which is a regional variant of Sasquatch, in the Himalayas, which is most likely a bear anyways. Um, Whole thing, that's a whole episode. Whole episode right there. Um, Actually, the Yeti is frequently not white. That's just because of a movie. Yeah, Yeti, oh yeah. So, like, in the stories before that movie, the Yeti was usually brown. So and then by the movie, movie happened. Do you mean the Santa, the claymation Santa movie? No, no. Um, like what movie had the Yeti in it that made everyone think it was uh, white? It was called um, Yeti versus there King was Kong. Like, mm, I forget the name of it. Um, yeah, like, I think it's actually the Abominable Snowman. If I'm going to be honest, or something along those lines, it was white in a uh, old movie, and it was because of like it was easier to see or something like that. Yeah. Um, but like historically speaking, um, 
the Yeti was not white. Oh, uh, there's a movie called Yeti Curse of the Snow Demon. I see that. Fun, I, fun, fun. Uh, Abominable. Oh, First look. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So, basically... Um, Live Googling. So, well, no, I read this in a, I read this um, in the past, and effectively, it was not originally white, but a movie made it white. And yeah. then it just got stuck in the public unconsciousness type thing. So, okay. A- anywho, regardless. It would make more sense for them to be not white. Even well, if it's a snow-covered area, if it's forested, you'd blend in better with, like, your surroundings if you were still kind well, of brownish. Yeah, well, the other thing, too, is, like, people think of it, the Yeti showing up at the tip of Everest, but that's not where it was usually sighted, either. No. So, like, it... it <laughs> We have to do an episode on the Yeti eventually, but, like, it's one of the many things that's on my list of, like, I want to do that, but, like, there's so much resources, so many resources on this, I don't feel like hacking through it to find good resources. Uh, yeah. Um, they kind of had the opposite problem of most cryptids in that, um, it's, like, almost too hard to get started on them. There's, I've had that happen a couple times. Here's what you do. You find, just take a shot, like a group of different resources that do cite their sources and make a table and then find the most common source that other things are pointing to. And then you can, you can get, the, that's a good starting point. Cause there's a, Is solid, it? there's a solid it's chance not- that a lot of them are going from the same base material. That's true. And then if you can, they let you get through all that garbage floating to the top. That's fair. Anywho, so this particular variant of Bigfoot was started, first sighted in Blake Slee, Pennsylvania, by Annette B. Although I couldn't find the original source of the count, Annette described the creature as seven feet tall with matted, dirty white hair. Its eyes were dark and spaced far apart. Its white hair covered the lower half of its face. There was pinkish skin around the eyes and forehead. It looked like its hair was a little longer on its he- head and hanging over its forehead like bangs. Ugh. Mm. Bangs. It, it, that, the bangs don't work for it. The That's bangs don't work. Um, it's a footnote, really, this story, in comparison to the more compelling case of Albert Osman, and I say compelling in air quotes, or the Battle of Ape Canyon. But it's a part of the fabric of this particular case. Albert Osman is still my favorite Bigfoot story. Oh, absolutely. It's it's just kind of hilarious. It's outstanding. It, it's it's so outlandish, like Like what it's just crazy. I, I, I like cause like I don't think that he actually was abducted by Bigfoot. I don't right? think so either. But it, like uh, what compelled him to tell that story? I don't know, and if this is your first Cryptopedia episode, after this, go listen to episode 84 to hear man get Bigfoot addicted to tobacco and then, like, body shame the female Bigfoots. Yeah, it's 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 a little weird, and it gets a little bit creepy. Like, yeah. A little bit, little bit creepy. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, this particular Bigfoot disappears for a whopping three years. Well, maybe apocryphal, the next reference I find is a recording of a big foot scream um, purportedly recorded in March of 1973 in Westmoreland County, PA. Um, Bounding the city of Pittsburgh, Westmoreland County is a fairly wooded region, and certainly, if one allows their imagination to run wild, a Bigfoot in the woods is not beyond the pale. Unfortunately, there's no attached story for this recording. Bigfoot sounds like he stepped on a Lego. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. <laughs> He's got a set of lungs on him for sure. Also, if you if you're listening to this, like legitimate warning, I think that this is like low key, um, like a seizure warning because they do this weird shaky cam, flashy thing. They tried to make and... it look like it, a still picture, look like an old video. Yeah, so like just just be aware, it's not really that interesting of a, of a piece of audio either. So no. It, it, but I, I feel I felt the need to acknowledge it because supposedly this was happening in the region that the main like bits of the story happen in. 
Um, so, whatever. Uh, however, it was taken close to Beaver County, a county to the northwest of Pittsburgh. In the early evening of September 23rd, 1973, two unnamed girls were waiting to be picked up in a wood location. While standing on the roadside, the girls were surprised to see an eight-foot-tall creature with shaggy white hair and glowing red eyes. Just like the intro. Uh Aha! What distinguishes this tale from the Annette B. case, however, is that the creature was carrying a large, luminous sphere. A first in the realm of Bigfoot for me. Yeah, so... (laughs) You assume it was Oog from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. It's a big... What the sphere is more concerning to me than the Bigfoot at this point. Oh, absolutely. Do, does the sphere ever come up again in like future stuff, or is this one account? This is literally the first and only account that I found of a Bigfoot holding a sphere. That why, why, why say that? I don't know. Uh, apparently, the Bigfoot was carrying a luminous sphere, Brandon. Or is, is that why they said that? Like, oh, we have to throw in something weird. Be- so people are like, well, why would they say oh. that if they were lying? So they're just throwing in a detail for no reason it's like that, to like, try it's to like, prove it? It's like that li- weird glowing sphere from Saudi Arabia. You remember the one? Yes, where everyone's all, and they're all touching it. Yeah, it's like that weird thing. Like that, like, yeah. glowing sphere. It's kind of like that, is what I'm imagining. What if that's the same sphere? Yeah, the reality I choose to exist in is the one where those are the same object. Yeah, I'm going to say they're the same object. But, so, there is, like, an implication in this story, though, for what why it was holding the luminous sphere. The implication. The implication. Um. Uh, so... Naturally, the girls fled into their house in fear. The father of one of the girls went into the woods in search of the creature, returning an hour later, refusing to talk about his experience. Oh, no. Did he get diddled by Bigfoot? We don't know. (laughs) He got diddled by... No, he didn't get diddled. It held him down and sucked his toes. (laughs) He's like, I don't want to talk about it. Well, Bigfoot does have a thing for feet, so like he got held documented. down and toe sucked. Aww. Why do you think? Why do you think Bigfoot has such big feet? Yeah, yeah. That's he sucking the power from his victim's toes, and it goes to his feet. <laughs> I hate this reality that you're crafting, Brandon. Oh shit! Someone hire me uh, as a writer. No, oh. don't. Please, people, don't. Oh, yeah. If you want some uh, really avant-garde shit, contact me. <laughs> I, well, just get someone Someone get this man in contact with uh, with the infomercials team of uh, Adult Swim. Oh, yeah. I, I made I made Christina watch um, unedited footage of a bear. Uned- what is that? So it's... What? Okay, so it's a, an old video from Adult Swim... It's made to look... So, basically, it's just video footage of a bear, right? Okay. And then... It says it's an a ad film. St- an ad starts. Okay. Okay. And in the ad, it's basically a depression medication commercial. Yeah. But, like, it continues past the commercial. Oh, okay. Like, longer. And it, there's, like, a 15-minute segment of a woman going, like, insane and having a fight with her doppelganger... And, like, her doppelganger taking her place in her home and, like, ruining the lives of her children and, like, all that stuff. But but the important part is it was designed to look like an ad that... on YouTube at the time that it came out. Oh! So, like, there was even, like, a little, like, skip in five, four, three, two, skip. Yeah. And you tried, if you tried clicking the skip, it didn't work. So That's it was, a, so it was good. kind of... It was like a meta, a meta thing. So like, it was one of those you had to be there to get it. Yeah. Um, oh, this but is a it's, tab that's gonna stay open in my browser until after we record this. Oh, it's 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 a wild, wild, wild video. I I adore the, uh, um, Aqua Teen, not Aqua Teen, uh, Adult Swim, um, infomercials. Yeah. Listen, I've got we've got we've got some fake commercials on this show. Adult Swim, go listen to episodes one through whatever with the fake commercials. Hire me. We could do this. We could. This yeah, could be a reality in which 
You pay. The me. problem is you have to go to Georgia. Oh, I'm not going. I'm not the no. The, my contract <laughs> explicitly states I don't have to leave my house. True. Okay. Fair enough. So, anywho, supposedly while the father was in the woods getting his toes sucked, um, a silver UFO was spotted hovering over the woods. Uh, in a classic B movie fashion, the UF, UFO fashion. Uh, the craft was reported to admit a beam of light into the woods. While the MUFON member, Stan Gordon, who collected this count, did not make any note of the abduction, the implication in the story is that the father may have been abducted and that the Bigfoot may have been affiliated in some way. Okay. Um, unfortunately, this is the only the only record I could find of the story is Stan Gordon's original report. So the, um, the sphere was kind of like a beacon so the UFO could find it? We don't know. Oh, we know. Like, That's what happened. He was, okay. he was, it was so they could locate him after his, his like, v- uh, vampiric foot suck. <sighs> I hate this idea. Of the alien UFO this. or that they're, like, foot vampires? Foot vampires. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, so... I don't think that word ever existed before today. That that combination of words. I don't think anyone has ever uttered foot and vampire side by side. Oh, I'm good today. coming up with some really nice original thoughts. I feel like that is an original thought, and that's why people listen to this podcast. Yeah, if you Google foot vampire, just it's that lady from uh, the Resident Evil Village game. So that might have been... I the might have had a vampire. really original thought. No, no. There's a there's a deviant art called the Foot Vampire. Uh, oh, this... Looks like looks like this is a deviant art person who has a foot fetish. Fun. Something about not believing in eh, touch one bare feet. John's in particular. Honest, he touched one. It was cold. Okay. Let's move from there. There's um, a lot of images that make me uncomfortable when I went, switched over to the images tab in Google. Oh, yeah, boy. Well, well, that's what happens when you, you search foot fetish on the internet. <laughs> oh, that's that's but, what happens when oh. foot is in your search. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Um. So, anywho, later that same year, yet another Bigfoot was spotted in the nearby Union Town on October 25th, 1973. When a glowing object was spotted landing in a pasture, two Bigfoot were then said to emerge from the nearby woods. The stories continue on in this fashion, chance encounters and sightings. None really stand out from the rest, although they're generally concentrated in the area of Pittsburgh for a little bit. Um, <sighs> so, in 2008, things change. Ooh, alright, we're, 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 we're approaching the modern era. Yeah, we skip ahead pretty quickly on this one. This time, the creature was spotted in Carbondale, PA, a town located near Scranton. So once again, Brandon, you came surprisingly close. Very close. Also, these locations are, again, very literal, like like our past episode. <laughs> like you've got Beaverton or whatever, and now you've got Carbon Carbondale. Yeah, it's also a mine. So yeah, like there's it's a mine town. So, you know, very literal names. Yeah, so while not close to the original batch of sightings, uh, it's not an impossible track for a creature that may or may not be capable of interplanetary flight. So, True. like, let's be real here. Uh, so as the story goes, there had been a s- batch of sightings of white Bigfoot in the area at the time. Not only that, but there was supposedly a younger Bigfoot sighted as well, a relative rarity in Bigfoot stories, with the only thing that I can think of off the top of my head having a young Bigfoot being... Uh, the Albert Osman story. Yes, um, where, he tried, usually, where he gets the children addicted to tobacco. Yep, yep, which is, you know, normal stuff. Um, but yeah, so like that's kind of a relative oddity in Bigfoot stories, from my perspective. Yeah, um, like on occasion there'll be like uh, someone saying that they saw, like they're never alone. They're always like with a larger one. And yeah. they like, oh, presume yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. child, yeah. Yeah, usually, well, because, like, that's the whole thing. Like, you need a frame of reference, effectively. Yeah. Because otherwise, like, you know, like... Although, that being said, if I see a child, um, they could be from, like, when do kids start walking? Like, three to 
21 and I can't really distinguish <laughs> their age. Yeah, there's um there's like I've got one point of reference which is my nephew. So if I see him like it's it's th- you're either younger than me or older than my nephew or like th- it's th- there's a really broad range. Oh yeah, no no no. It's that's basically it. Like I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm no. I'm awful at aging people like entirely. Oh, also um, I I can't age people if they are my age because if they're my age, I always assume they're about 5 years younger than me. Why is that? I don't know. I think it's cuz like mentally I I think I think I'm still 5 years younger than I am. That's fair. I I that's a relatable feeling. Yeah, like, oh, that guy's an adult. And you're like, oh, shit, we're the same age. Yep. Yeah. That's a mood. Yeah. I'm bad because I think that people are older than they are. Like, there's common friends we have that are younger than us that I'm not, like, I'm surprised that they're younger than us. Oh, I think I know Consistently. A, a few of who you're talking about. And yeah, yeah I always I'm assume like, they are the same age as me. <laughs> well, e- for me, even your sister surprises me by how much younger she is. Yeah, true. I guess it's because, like, now that people who are younger than us can also be functioning adults. Yeah, that's what throws me off. But yeah, that's what's, like, if you're an adult and you function, I assume you're the same age as me. You could be a decade younger than me. Yeah, that's 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 what throws things off for me, too. Yeah. Anywho, um, no real major standouts uh, from this part of the story for, like, the two thousand from around 2008. Um, it's just really, like, a bunch of Bigfoot sightings started up. Um, against this backdrop, a local news station ran a story on White Bigfoot in response to an anonymous email. The report indicated that the creature was sighted in and around the nearby mine re- reclamation site. Um, so things come to a head on February 2nd, 2010, when a clip lasting about 30 seconds was uploaded to the internet. Now, Brandon, I'm going to describe the clip while... You, could, you watch it, and then yep. I'll, I'll just keep going forward. Um, so, in this clip, the cameraman is navigating through the brush in the dark. A flashlight's beam is the only source of light as the cameraman moves noisily through the woods. Now, I'm going to let you watch the video a little longer yeah, so before it's, I continue. Yeah, so it's dry, dense foliage, mm-hmm. and uh, the flashlight's pointing at the ground, which seems correct if you're walking through the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and there was one really short... I got, I skipped back a couple. Uh, he, there's a sound which could be a bird, and then there's a bigfoot thing from from the still in, in the clip that seems very short to me and Whoa. bulky. Did this white bigfoot? Did bigfoot Tony do a do an episode on this? He he does like video analysis of um bigfoot things. Oh, I did. Don't worry, we don't need Bigfoot Tony for this one. Oh, okay. I did an analysis of this one. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I don't know if you can notice it, but there's also heavy breathing that can be heard in the clip. Yes. So, like, I don't know if that's supposed to be the cameraman breathing like that, or if that's supposed to be the Bigfoot. Um, I think it's I've that heard... we're supposed to assume that um, it was... The Bigfoot. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, but anywho, he's moving very noisily through the woods, though, regardless. Right. So, basically what happens, and Brandon described this a little, but I'm going to re-describe it um, in my own words. Uh, a humanoid creature covered in suspiciously white fur is immediately visible. Yeah. The instant, the instant the light hits the creature, it runs off screen left. Instant. Like, as soon as the light hits it, it runs. Like, almost before it. Like, if you watch it, it's, like, as close as you possibly can get to the moment the light hits it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, um, it's kind of, like, suspicious. Because, like, I had difficulty freeze-framing on its stationary because of how quickly it moves. So I, so I I am maybe on the Bigfoot Tony, maybe not video for it right now. I'm coming mm-hmm. to a different conclusion than he is based off of this, but he, he's able to get some really good um, still images. And the thing 
the thing that that stands out most to me are you gonna spoil are you gonna spoil the page worth of analysis that i did oh wait did you do i didn't scroll far i did I'll, a full I'll let you do your page <laughs> i did a full page worth of analysis on this video Oh Brandon. shit! All right, I'll let I'll let you take it. I'll let you take it. Don't from here. you dare I'll take see this if thunder I agree from with, me. Let's see if we come to the same conclusion. Don't you dare take this thunder. Don't take the sky away from me. Okay. Okay. So supposedly there's a shot of the creature before the big reveal, but I don't see it. If true, this is a pretty amazing reveal. A still living hominid besides humans living on the North American continent. Not only that. But it's been existing in secret near a population center with the only meaningful detection being a blurry nighttime video. Right? Yes. So, um, first thing about this, uh, if you're a recurring listener, you might know where I'm going to go with this first. So it's time for me to break out in an article on Tepedum lucidium. And... That is a membrane in the eyes, which some animals have, which is responsible for what we know as eye shine. Ah, okay. So for those who don't know, animals that operate in low light areas or are nocturnal typically have a reflective membrane in the back of their eye known as the tapetum lucidium. This membrane reflects light that enters the eye and allows the creature to see better in low light conditions. Because effectively it's collecting more light on the rods and cones and all that stuff, right? Trade-off is typically animals that have this condition also are colorblind, right? Um, So in the video in question, it's it's a fairly dark night. Now, this might be partially because of how the camera works, but it's definitely dark enough that the person recording it thought it was necessary to have a light source, right? So assuming... so. Um, in the video, the Bigfoot doesn't have any external aid, obviously. No glowing light, white orb, no nothing like that. Um, how cool would it be if it did have a glowing light orb, though? That would be pretty fucking badass. Like, legitimately badass. Um, so, assuming the moonlight wasn't strong enough to navigate the woods, we can assume that the Bigfoot had some form of night vision to aid them in the travel, correct? Correct. If a person needs a light to navigate, a Bigfoot probably is also going to need a light. Because, because, because frankly, the, the structure of this particular creature is very similar to a human in the video. If we're looking at the video as it's presented, very similar to a person. Um, but, but the eyes in the video don't exhibit the generally characteristic eye shine of mammals with night vision. So, additionally, in earlier stories of Pennsylvania's White Bigfoot, the creature was described as having glowing red eyes. In this video, the creature's eyes are pitch black. And this is not a camera artifact. The eyes of the creature are definitely absorbing the light. Like, you can't see any anything. There's no, no like, reflective sheen at all. Like, even a person, you'd expect to see a little bit of something. Not eye shine. But, like, the reflection of the flashlight in the eyes. So, why do the creature's eyes differ significantly from the earlier accounts? Even assuming prior accounts were inaccurate, like I said, the creature's eyes don't seem like those of a living creature. No sheen, no shine, no glossiness. They don't even reflect the immediate source of the flashlight, as I said. There is almost no way the Bigfoot would be able to see in pitch darkness and navigate successfully. Because it's not like letting, it, it's it's whatever it's doing, it's not collecting enough light. I can almost guarantee that based on what we're presented with in this video. Um, so at the very least, the creature would be momentarily blinded by the light and struggle to navigate in the dark, right? But yes. the Bigfoot in the video is able to evade the camera within a second and move fast enough that the camera person presumably can't relocate him as the video cuts off, right? So, like, if if I'm blinded in the woods and someone splashes, like, a light on me, even if 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 that person's shocked, I'm not going to be able to instantly hide again. I'd be able to, like, the person should be able to relocate me because the brush is not dense enough that this thing can just disappear instantly. It's dense, but it's not that dense. Um, so, regardless 
Um, not only that, but as soon as the creature enters frame, the breathing cuts off. True. Now, this could be the cameraman's breathing, but I've seen it reported as the Bigfoot, so I'm going to ding them on that, because if anything, the Bigfoot would be breathing more heavily as it's moving. It's not going to suddenly stop breathing and run. Full stop. Um, But wait, Brandon, there's more. But wait, there's more. Why does the Bigfoot even bolt when the light hits it? If the analysis of the Bigfoot be- believers is to be-, be believed, the light, in fact, hits it about eight seconds before it finally bolts. Why would the first time the light hitting it not be submission for it to flee? How would it know how a flashlight functions to know that it should run? And more than that, were there any footprints or hair evidence on the site to accompany the video? Not that any of that would mean anything, but they didn't even, like, have a video re- re- revisiting the site in daylight to elucidate scale or conditions of the area. hmm So, that's, from my perspective, there are so many things wrong with just the, like, mechanics of the, the creature. Right? Yes. I didn't, that's, that's what I focused on. Brandon... What does this individual, this, this other individual, have to say well, about well, this? Well, let, let, one, he says it's real, but I disagree. Um, so what? Here, here's, here's, I just sent you an image. That's a screenshot from his video. The thing I noticed from from this footage is that Bigfoot doesn't have eyes. He doesn't have eyes in the same way. If you buy a mask, they cut eyes out so that you could see f- through it. I, I don't see the video. Oh, I just sent you the. Link, I don't see the image uh, for the image. You didn't, you didn't so here's his video. Just. Just um, skip around any part in the beginning, and you'll see it. You'll like slow it down, and it's pretty high quality. Mm-hmm. Um, he comes to a very different conclusion because, like, the mouth part opens a little tiny bit, but masks commonly have like a little slit so you can breathe. But I I've seen furries that have masks that open and close. Yeah. Oh, Bigfoot Furry Society. Also, like, that's not... Okay, yeah, I see what he's saying, but, like... Okay, continue with your with your breakdown. Uh, I'm just saying that the thing that stands out most to me is, is... I'm agreeing with you that there is a lack of eye shine. I also believe there's a lack of eyes. I think there's a mask. <laughs> well, even if it's not a mask, even if it's, like, white face paint, right? Like, yeah. it kind of looks like... It kind of looks like it's eyeshadow of some kind. Cause, yeah, like it's very dark. That's not how eyes work. And not only that, but it's a color image. So it's like... Yeah, in order for something to, see... to be black, black, like that's black, black on white, it has to be like black makeup or like a gap between two surfaces like, where there there's like to... light not going in there. There, there. It's not like it's going to be all cornea and pupil, right? Yeah. Like, I know it's dark. I know his pupils would be dilated. But, like, it wouldn't be the whole eye. Yeah. Right? Like, not the whole eye's worth. It yeah. would be at least, there would be at least some sclera mm-hmm. remaining. Like, you would see some part of white in his eye. Like, what the fuck? Right? Yeah. Like, I don't understand why people think that this is real. And I'm not the only one who doesn't think this is real. There's, I'm a little bit disappointed in my in the in the Bigfoot Tony by the way, because he's usually pretty good. Because like he'll even like he's like found the exact like costumes and shit people have used to fake videos before. Mm-hmm. But this one, like he sleeps, he I see I, I, we're drawing different conclusions from from the same data set. I, I don't know Th- this this video is super like the first time I saw it, I'm like oh that's clearly fake. Yeah. Like I literally the first time I saw that I'm like. Yeah, that's super fake. Like, there's no reality in which this is. I'm believing that this is anything other than the fakest thing on the planet Earth. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. the The person in the video that I linked you, um, also like is talking about evolution and like stuff like that, and like how it would the 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 way that a Bigfoot like the advantageous evolutionary path for a Bigfoot would be like selecting for individuals that are able to evade like vision and are capable of hunting and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, yeah, but there would still be Bigfoot that failed to meet that criteria. Yeah. Right. 
evolution isn't just all successes. Like, I think that's a thing that people don't understand is, like, the path to a human has a lot of weird, uh, a, a lot of weird maladapted things along the way. Yeah, right? it's a series of mutations, and then you, 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 a lot has to fail until the one that is good goes on more. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. Right? Um, or one is just a sociopathic murderer who kills every other species for dominance and, you know, humans. Humans! Uh, but anywho, Bigfoot Tony may believe in it, and the person who I got my video from may believe in it, but it seems, on average, people seem to believe that the video is a hoax. In fact, one prolific Bigfoot researcher, oh. Scott Carpenter... And when I say prolific, uh, maybe I should say, I mean it in the sense of, like, he produces a lot. Yeah, yeah. prolific doesn't have, because th people see, use prolific to describe things that are good, and I don't support that, because prolific just means you do something a lot. You can and do he, it. And then, let me, let me tell you, Scott Carpenter does this a lot. Yeah, qu quantity and quality aren't things that necessarily go hand in hand. Yeah. So he's a credulous believer of Bigfoot, and he chalks up the whole thing to a hoax. In my opinion, this is a hoax. Some thought went into this to make it look realistic and believable. The person put on white makeup, then puts on some sort of white jacket. On the head, a white mesh material was used to fit very tight. Using the flashlight with the video, um, with the video camera, was the perfect way to cover up any flaws and shows, and only showing the subject from the waist up. Since no mask was used, facial expressions and reactions to the light would look very natural. Jerking the flashlight, flashlight also made the subject appear as if it moved very fast. Now, I disagree with Scott's insistence that it looked realistic, because the first second I saw it, I had it made for fake. Um, many of his points are valid and do line up with my concerns and thoughts about the videos. As what I thought was a brief aside... Scott Carpenter, as I said, is a fairly prolific YouTuber with a channel that delves into Bigfoot hunting more than a little. Oh, does he go into the foot sucks? No, no. Oh. Scott is an interesting character, and I've only just begun to peruse his content. Oh, no. In the brief overview of the channel I conducted, uh, looking for more takes on white Bigfoot, I learned the following about his personal model of what Bigfoot is. First, oh. Bigfoot are Nephilim. Oh, wow. Oh, I like him already. So, for those of you who don't know, Nephilim are kind of a nebulous race of giants from the Bible. Um, some schools of thought consider them fallen angels. Others consider them the children of fallen angels. Almost definitely it's an episode in its own right. But, the long and short of it is... Scott thinks that Bigfoot are human angel hybrids, effectively, in his personal cosmology. I like the way this guy thinks. Second, and I posted this to the Discord already, Bigfoot has the ability to turn invisible, predator style. In this video, I watched a fair amount of, yes. um, and it's wild. So, first of all, uh, he's literally interpreting noise in a low-quality still from a video recording as a shadow from a cloaked Bigfoot. And I have links to all of this in the show notes, in the uh, the episode uh, copy. Is this the one that was in the Discord? It sure is. Uh, I have links boy. to all the best juicy bits. So, um, first of all, that first link, Brandon, is effectively what he's done is he's modified the... He's changed the image to black and white and then modified the contrast in, like, adjusted the noise until something shows up in the video in, in the image right yeah. like he's adjusting the he is changing the image so much that it's literally a different image by the end of it yeah he doesn't realize that what he's doing is causing the thing that he's seeing exactly exactly yeah the next oh, thing and he really blows up some of those shadows too Oh, oh yeah, completely, completely. It's it's those to the are point some of, fat pixels. Yeah, it's to the point of complete, completely val being valueless. 
Yeah. Um, the next bit, he blames the motion of a tree on a cloaked Bigfoot. Oh, all right. When the wind is a far better explanation. And I kid you not, Brandon, he uses the fix slash enhance function in the video editor. Oh, I like I like his uh his accent. Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. He literally does the fucking NCIS uh oh. enhance. This is to adjust this like this, this is why they should there shouldn't be any f- free video editing software. And then, Brandon, it gets even better. He edits an image of the cloaked Bigfoot to be more clear, which is more fan art than actual photo analysis. And not only that, but Brandon, I think he added eyes. Wait. All right. Brandon, I think he added eyes to this image. Uh, I How do I have so many windows open? I have to close this. Hang on. Yeah. Brandon, yes. I... I saw this, and like, uh, I, 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 the image, the link is a little bit delayed. I think it's like, yeah, yeah, okay. So it's at thirty minutes and two seconds is when the the money shot happens. Oh, John, you're right. He added eyes. He added John, eyes. John, you're Brandon. right. He added eyes. He added eyes. Brandon, he added what? eyes. What is this? I don't know, Brandon, but it's hilarious. This is amazing. This I, I I'm so happy I discovered this individual. Oh wow! How do I subscribe? Let's. <laughs> um, and not only that, but he also had a run in with White Bigfoot. There's not really much interesting in that video. I, I'm also he says something about a portal. Not sure he understands how copyright works. No, no. You no, can't just doesn't. say put the word copyright on it. No, you can't. You can't. Like you can, um, you like the ability to just write the word copyright exists, but there's some other stuff that has to happen for that to be real. Yeah. Um. So, frankly, there's too much to go on with this guy. Like, I can't just tack this onto the tail end of the episode. I feel oh like. wow! Go to his channel and look at the banner at the top. That's Wait. some good stuff. Oh That's yeah, 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 stuff. yeah, yeah. He like super believes in invisibility for um, like his stuff. He also has a back trail cam that he sits on the back of his head. Effectively, <laughs> he has a video so, like, called "The Inconvenient Truth." <laughs> oh, which one's that? Dogman direct eye contact. Oh, I hate it. Oh wow! Yeah, oh Bigfoot things that make you go H H M M M M M M. He plays Jesus. cat and mouth mouse with cat and mouth. Oh, gross! Uh, with Sasquatch, white Bigfoot and eye shine. The demon footage. Wow! Black tra- back trail dog man. He does a lot of these, like, weird loop tool cutouts. Yeah. All right. He's got one on the gray aliens. Yeah. Cool, it's, cool. It's... I don't think he understands what being a researcher is. No. And that's coming from someone who does research. Someone who is an actual researcher. Yeah. I don't think he understands research or peer review. This or... is... Wow, I like yeah, this channel. I I discovered this man because of this this story, and I was just like, I'm happy. <laughs> this 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 gives joy. Yeah, there's a lot there's a lot in here. Um, overall though, Pennsylvania's white Bigfoot is not super compelling. The prospect of a be- al- Bigfoot being an alien tickles me 11 uh, years worth of videos yeah i know it's a lot it's a lot i was trying to finish the i was trying to, to close out the episode but i get it i get it um he kind of derailed me i was originally going to cover more alien bigfoot stuff in this episode but when i found him i was just like well shit that's it that's like the end of the episode 
Oh, like yeah. there's there's nothing more that I can do. Like it's not going to be funnier. Nothing I I find is going to be more interesting or funnier than this individual. No, not possible. Um, but yeah. So like, I don't know. It. it I think I'm going to do another episode of Alien Bigfoot because I thought there would be more gristle in that particular mill. But uh, yeah, this ended up just becoming um, Scott Carpenter's kind of weird. The episode. Yeah. Uh, it, it when I when I saw it, like I searched him and I'm like Nephilim like because that was the first hit I'm like <laughs> oh my god what am I what am I about to read he's that guy at the bar where like you overhear a little bit and as soon as a bar stool opens up closer you're just like uh, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna relocate I need to- I gotta get I gotta I gotta listen. Yeah. I don't want him to notice me. Like, no. Let's be real. If he notices me, that's a problem. But I'm going to listen. Oh, yeah. I'm going to listen to that shit. Oh, yeah. You, you definitely uh, buy a round just to keep him around longer. <laughs> but don't... But, but, but please don't tell him that I bought it. Please. I, I don't want him... I don't want him any closer to me. Yeah, this is this is the perfect level of interaction for me with him. Just I want him around. I want to hear what he has to say, but like, don't let him any closer to me. I don't want him to know I exist. Yeah. Also, pour him a double. <laughs> I I need to see where this conversation goes when the guy gets a little bit, a little bit too. Although much. he might he might be one of the kinds who doesn't drink too. Yeah, he did have an accent. Well, he's he's also like pulling Nephilim in and stuff like that. So like, yeah. he might be the type who takes himself. Like, I don't drink because I don't like alcohol, like the taste of alcohol. But like, he might be the type of person who doesn't drink because, uh, he thinks it's unprofessional or like, uh, he thinks he needs to always be on, so to speak. Because <laughs> so he like, never, you know what he he doesn't drink. He always needs to be on because there are invisible Bigfoot that are out there, and he's got to be on it in case some shit goes down. Like, wouldn't eventually they just like kill him? Like, if he if he was close to the truth, wouldn't you think that Bigfoot would just murder him? Yeah, like at a certain point, because like. Their goal is to stay hidden, right? Like, invisible. That's why they so developed like, invisibility, of course. Like, at a certain point, wouldn't, like, it be beneficial to them to murder Scott Carpenter? Um, for his knowledge? Because, John, like... John, 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 Scott Carpenter has a foot thing. The Bigfoot are onto him. He's intentionally going out there and antagonizing the Bigfoot... So they can do the vampire to his feet. I see. I don't think. I don't think Scott Carpenter believes in vampire foot vampire Bigfoot though. He believes in Nephilim Bigfoot, but not foot vampire Bigfoot. There's a reason all his video footage is so shaky, John. Oh. <laughs> Some Bigfoot sucking his toes. Brandon, you've made me sad with what you said. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Before you make me any sadder, um, this has been Cryptopedia. <laughs> our website is cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Our Twitter is at cryptopediacast. If you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Our Patreon supporters are, and it's your turn to say it. Ha <laughs> ha! Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, and fuck Andrew Jackson. Um. There's Which is Lenwood, by the way. Yeah. There, there's other people who support us, um, but, you know, uh, these are jackalopes. Indeed. This is what they get for being jackalopes. This is what you get. <laughs> this is what you get. <laughs> this is what you get. Um, we have a Facebook group that hasn't. S- I haven't been paying much attention to because people have been moderating it for us. Um, to to the extent you, where I don't know if I get notific if I have my notifications set up correctly because people are noticing things I'm like how did that um, uh. yeah stuff gets caught um, stuff gets caught. also 
we we don't make money off of this podcast, so like if you want to talk about other podcasts, I don't have a problem with it. Like it's it's not like I'm making money off of this podcast. This is more or less a thing we do for fun. Um, We're doing it for fun. We we make enough money to pay for the website. That's pretty much all we do. That's that's what we've that's what we've reached. We've reached the point where we are it's self-sustaining. Not, it, it's a self-sustaining podcast. Um, and if we it thank left, you. <laughs> yeah, if it left self-sustaining, I'd probably have to end it just because of <laughs> monetary <laughs> concerns. But um, if, since it's self-sustaining, we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, um, all possible thanks to the patrons. Literally, the the podcast continues to be made because we have patrons. Um, are you happy now, patrons? Yeah, you did it. <laughs> yeah. You you forced you foisted this entire existence upon us. There's because of you, foot sucking Bigfoot exists. That yeah, that thought is out there. We can talk. Literally, this. you have incepted foot sucking Bigfoot into the world. He's got to get them toes. Yeah, you've done that. I wish you hadn't, but you've done it. So it's there. It's too late to put that genie back in the bottle. Let's just be honest. Actually, no. At the time of recording, it's not too late to put that genie back in the bottle. But I know you won't edit that out. <laughs> that is right. So it probably is too late. Um, <laughs> if you enjoyed the podcast and you're on a platform that supports rating, reviewing, and subscribing, uh, be sure to do that. If you don't, no pressure. Um, instead, maybe share it with a friend. Uh, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. We have a really good track record with finishing those. We we actually we see that as a joke, but we we do pretty good on those. If it comes to me, it doesn't go so well. But, <laughs> um, that's also partially because I've been doing a bunch of um. PhD stuff lately. Yeah, which has been- yeah. PhD stuff is also a very good excuse to like not get around to doing some things. Like, sorry, I'm busy. I have a PhD thing. Yeah, that that honestly that explains like ninety percent of things that I don't do is literally now. Yeah, I got PhD stuff to do, and like I could spend the time on that. It's like, sorry, I just published a paper. <laughs> well, it's not published. It's preprint. Pre-pre- it, it's out there. It I is in the universe. I printed a paper, and I'm actively working on my first, like, not solo, but me in the in the driver's seat. Yeah, you're, you're the lead. Yeah. So, anywho, that's it for the podcast stuff. Yep. You can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com, and my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. My Instagram is at Mew2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is JohnDunhamGames.com. And my email is John at CryptopediaCast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is GreaterGloryCo.com. And his email is TomMikeHill at gmail.com. Any sightings of that man recently? No, no sightings. I haven't left the house. Oh, no. Did I leave the house? That's a lie. I left the house. Because to get fajita ingredients, but I did not see him at the local supermarket. Well, you also don't. Yeah, it makes sense that you. Okay, anyhow. Um. <laughs> as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are gonna get weird. Hmm.